Welcome to the creative community. I'm your host, David Starkey, and my guest this time is Elizabeth Leister. Welcome. Thank you. Well, you are a visual artist who has done all sorts of things, and we're going to look at um, kind of the range of your work, mm -hmm. the body of your work, as mm -hmm. it were, because <laughs> you're really interested in the body. That's one of your preoccupations. Yes. Um, I want to come to that in, in three kind of major phases of work, Elizabeth. But first, I always like to ask people how they got started in their chosen endeavor. Were you a, a young artist, budding artist, when you were little? Yes, absolutely. Um, my two sisters and I were uh, highly encouraged by by our parents to pursue the arts, and um, I think I remember uh, from a uh, very early age uh, wanting to be an artist, mm -hmm. either a dancer or an, or an artist. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, yeah. Uh, well, you were you telling me your father was a, a, an engineer, but they, you, he and your mother sent all three of their daughters to art school. Yes, yes, <laughs> That's um, wild. highly unusual. <laughs> yeah. um, yes, we all, uh, I th all three of us actually pursued um, painting, mm -hmm. um, and um, um, my my two sisters are our moms now, okay. but um, they are very creative individuals, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, yes, we were all. Well, do you remember a moment when you decided I I'm not going to be a dancer, I'm going to be a visual artist instead? <sighs> Is it a process? I, I don't really. I, I painted and drew um, all through high school. Mm -hmm. uh, my sisters and I uh, would go every weekend to take figure drawing classes. And, um, and I think I did a summer at Rhode Island School of Design mm -hmm. um, where I did more painting and drawing mm -hmm. and I think photography, printmaking. So um, it, it uh, slowly just mm -hmm. became apparent that it was going to be um, visual arts. Now, when, when did you find that you were thinking of yourself as a serious artist? Um, was it in graduate school as an undergraduate or after that? Um, probably in undergraduate mm -hmm. school. Um, I went to Tyler School of Art and uh, the program that I was in, the, the um, peers, um, the, the students that I was with were uh, very competitive. Mm -hmm. Uh, in a good way, mm -hmm. and um, it was it was tough. Everybody worked very hard, and it was a great uh, there was a great energy there. And um, I went to graduate school ten years after that, um, and uh, changed it up and went uh, got my MFA in sculpture. Mm -hmm. um, I in that interim I started making work with found objects and uh, a lot of work with fabric and actually clothing. Mm, and, okay. um, and we'll see some of that, I think. Actually. Yes. Yeah. yes. Well, that, that, that's a kind of a good entree for me to ask you about the first phase. We're going to talk about the, the body and representations, particularly as it applies to women. Mm -hmm. um, maybe let's go into the first piece that we have, and we can kind of use that as a, as a jumping off okay. point. Um, talk to me a little bit about um, what it is that we are about to see. Um, this was um, a wedding dress that I created out of um, plastic sheeting, just uh, plastic uh, that you would buy in the hardware store. And um, it was sewn, hand sewn and sewn on a sewing machine. And I think the, the body of the dress is about 12 or 15 feet long. And then there's an, a train. Um, it's enormous. That, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's plastic, huge. Yeah. It, it's huge. Um, so I was interested in um, questioning uh, some of uh, society's expectations about how women should look, mm -hmm. um, how they should act, what they should do. And um, that was one of the pieces from, I think, the early 90s. Let's take a look at the next one that we have. Uh, I think this set of images is from a site-specific installation that I did in uh, Center City, Philadelphia. And it was called Delusions, a tongue in cheek boutique. <laughs> uh, so uh, it looked like a, a regular boutique when you were walking down the street, but when you um, stepped inside, all of the um, fixtures and the clothing, the products were tweaked to um, critique, again, this, this idea specifically about clothing and beauty products. Um, so you're just walking in off the street of Philadelphia mm -hmm. into this um, store, but it's actually a gallery, I, an installation. An installation, yeah. So those are um, some pantyhose that are stretched um, from floor to ceiling. And uh, I had images from some fashion magazines of that time that I, that I blew up that really 
Um, they are not um, manipulated at all. <laughs> that really show the the uh, sort of scary. Yeah, well, that's what about. I was about to say. Is it seem, you seem to be exaggerating these uh, conventional images, but in fact, you're just reproducing them. Right. Here. Right. So this was a, it was a great experience for me as an artist because there were so many people who wandered in off of the street mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, didn't really have any expectations like you do when you go into a gallery right, or a right. museum and uh, really understood what I was trying to communicate and that was really rewarding. Now were you there a lot of the time just kind of hanging out? I was. Yeah. I, I had rented the space myself um, so I had to be there to, mm -hmm. to, mon to open and close right, and right. monitor it. So. Yeah, it was a great experience. Yeah. So um, you're in uh, back east Philadelphia, and mm -hmm. then um, you're going to get out here to California five years ago, but I think we still have some more work that you're, you're doing. Yes. Um, talk me through the, the next uh, bit of pieces. I've got, we've got sculpture and photography, I um, think. I think the next several slides are um, some photographs and some cast latex pieces that I created. Uh, when I was at graduate school at Bard College, mm -hmm. um, and I guess also a little bit after that. So my focus on the body, the sort of the exterior, the representation of mm -hmm. the body, um, shifted to the interior of the body, and I was really interested in uh, this idea of the, of the body in a constant state of transformation, you know, we're constantly aging, mm -hmm. um, and the body is just complete, always changing. And also this idea that uh, we all have a body, but it's, it's so mysterious to us. Um, you really don't have a whole lot of knowledge about what's happening inside of mm -hmm. us, or a lot of control over what's happening um, with the body, ultimately. Um, so, again, this also sort of marks a shift in my work from uh, sculpture to photography mm -hmm. and ultimately leads to uh, video. The video work that you're going right. to show us later on. Right. Well, this is um, not the first time I've talked to a, a sculptor who's been working in non-traditional materials like latex. Um, what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of working in that as opposed to, to bronze or... Uh, in late, the latex um, was really interesting to me because it, uh, I could color it mm. and it, it had, I could color it so it had that flesh tone mm -hmm. and really mimic um, sort of a skin quality mm -hmm. and the flexibility of it. Right. Um, uh, yeah. What so about its durability? Is that something that's going to stick around for a while or does uh, that matter no. to you? <laughs> in fact, a lot of those um, sculptures are... Uh, have started to decay and, and dry up and, uh -huh. and transform themselves, which uh, is it's interesting, an interesting because process it, in itself, yeah. right, it, it mimics the, the concepts behind the work, actually. Right. So you, you've, you've gone from uh, representations of the external body to the interior. Um, mm -hmm. You're talking about psychological processes as well as, you know, just the, the inside of the, of the body. Mm -hmm. um, Talk me through to um, the next thing, which is, I think, a, a video, a couple of video stills, and then we have a, a little bit of the a, a, a movie. Right. I think um, these are stills from a video called Symbiote, um, 